I'm David Larson here in Floyd, Virginia. Welcome to our Bugwick Historical Microcomputer Museum. We have a nice little museum here in Floyd. And come on in and take a look. We'll give you a big story about the history of microcomputers. Well, our museum started years ago with the publishing of the books called Bugwicks 1 and 2 by Professor Roney and myself in digital electronics. And that evolved into lots of books and our collecting of computers. And here you see the Bug Book Historical Microcomputer Museum. And we have in here a display of uh, some of the early microcomputers, not all of them by any means, but a good representation. And our warehouse is loaded with thousands more. So we have uh, in here some of the very first computers, and they're uh, historically significant and fun to look at. Actually, the first computer that was available for people to build was a construction article by John Titus. He designed this Mark 8 computer and published it in Radio Electronics in 1974. And it was the first time that people could actually build a computer. It was not a kid, it was a construction article. And several hundred were built, and it was really the start of the home computer revolution. And uh, John is given credit for that, and it's a wonderful uh, little computer. It uses the 8008 processor. Didn't do very much, but it started the revolution, that's for sure. Well, John started the revolution in 1974, but it wasn't a kit. This Mitz Altair you see here was built by John, uh, Ed Roberts. Popular Electronics wanted to have a competing article, so they published an article in January of 1976. Ed Roberts made this computer called the Altair 8800, based on the 8080 microprocessor. He expected to sell 500. He had orders for 4,000 within a few months. It was a very popular computer, and that's also where Bill Gates and Paul Allen started their business by writing Tiny Basic for this computer. So this started a revolution where people could buy a kit, have all the parts, and build a small working computer. Well, Steve Wozniak <clears throat> designed the Apple I and uh, worked with uh, Steve Jobs. They had the Apple I, but it didn't sell too well, so Steve uh, Wozniak started to design the Apple II almost immediately. And this is an Apple II, a special Apple II here, uh, sold by Bell and Howard. This is just an Apple II in a black box. And it's just the original Apple II. And uh, that's sort of, well, it did start the Apple company. Of course, Apple I only sold about 200 units, and there's only about 50 of those left. But the Apple II, which you see here in a special version of the uh, Bell and Howe version, just an Apple II, uh, really put the start on the Apple company, and they went uh, gangbusters after that with lots of additional computers, and as you know, a very, very successful company. 1977 was a hallmark year because it was a year of plug-and-play computers. We just mentioned the Apple II. The Apple II was one of the computers in 1967, and I'm sorry, 1977. The Radio Shack Model I was the second one, and the third one was this PET Commodore. These were three computers that you could plug in, turn them on, and they had a version of BASIC and ROM so they would run. We called them the plug and play. And it was the first year you could actually buy computers, plug them in, and start writing a little software program and have them run. The next really big year was uh, 1981 when IBM came out with the personal computer called the IBM PC, as we all refer to it as. It was the first time IBM had gone outside of the company. It was a non-proprietary product and designed this computer in Boca Raton in less than one year. And this started the, really the personal computer revolution. Uh, there were many second source uh, vendors for software and hardware. And IBM went in the business and did very well for a while. They're completely out of the uh, personal computer business now, but for many years they were uh, very big in the personal computer business, starting with this IBM PC in 1981. Okay, I'm holding this book, uh, Bug Book 3, which dealt with interfacing the 8080 microprocessor. This is the first book, training book, that actually instructs people on how to interface instrumentation and transducers to a microprocessor chip. This book was produced by uh, Roni, Larson, and Titus, and uh, Professor Roney did all the writing in the book, but uh, John Titus designed the computer and we all worked together to produce this book. This is the very first truly educational book on interfacing microcomputers. 
This is a computer that went with that book. Uh, John Titus designed this. It was a training computer and all the signals were brought out where people could get at the data bus, the control bus, and the address bus. It was expensive so it wasn't very popular actually. It was too expensive. So a second generation, just like uh, Steve Wozniak designed the Apple I and the Apple II, well here was the second version. Uh, this turned out to be a very popular training computer based on the 8080 microprocessor where the data signals and all the signals uh, for interfacing were brought out and you could do your interfacing and enter your program and uh, learn to use the computer in control environments, instrumentation environments, and so forth. This computer turned out to be very popular, used in community colleges, colleges, even high schools, and industrial applications. In fact, we used this computer for many years teaching at our university, Virginia Tech, and professional seminars as well. Well, we started out uh, training with the first books in digital electronics and then microcomputers, and then we collected microcomputers. And now the purpose of our museum, even though I'm retired from teaching uh, formal electronics and computers, the purpose of our museum here is to continue the education in a historical sense and teach people where the uh, start was with the microcomputer revolution, which is so interesting and pervasive in everything we have, including our digital watch cameras and everything, and where did all this start as far as the microprocessor is concerned. So that's what we're teaching here in our museum, is the history of the microcomputer from day one of the integrated circuit up through the uh, modern microprocessors and microcomputers. So it's a, a fun project. We have a large collection and we're going to be expanding our museum and using it as an educational piece. And we have school children, adults, uh, retro computer guys, all kinds of geeky computer folks come by and look and they all enjoy seeing where this uh, started and how it started and where it's headed.